Ben is here. Ben's here. Okay, let's bring Ben in. <laughs> I love that. Got his microphone. Got his mic. Like a pro. Really official. We say that. <laughs> we still can't hear you, Ben. Oh my god, my computer is so slow. Bless it. Uh, are we? Yeah, we are recording. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> were we were recording that the whole time. No, I definitely wasn't. If I was, I will. Cut it out. Don't worry, it's fine. It's not really interesting. Put that out there. Um, oh, there's something happening. There's something, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, you are, you're there. There you, you are. are. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, fine. Yay. So now I'm using my computer's sound card uh, and no, they have no headphones. Um, cool. So I'll start with um, kind of like, uh, you know, the main question that you ask to creators on anything, which is, what originally inspired the pair of you to write this thing? Why, why did you want to tell this story? Well, we, we met on a writer's group uh, called Book Music Lyrics, yep. which is a great group where, uh, you know, you quiz each other's work and you develop your skills and you work with an amazing bunch of, um, of professionals in the, in the industry. Poppy and I liked each other's work and we had met with four and we kind of, I think we're aware of each other and and so we thought well could we find something to work on together um and then it sort of evolved over time it was you know a little bit of a midlife crisis sort of thing <laughs> i had written a song um i'm sure i can swear on your program it was a song i, I wrote called fuck i'm 40 which was just yeah. a very simple song I know that, yeah i remember the song <laughs> you remember that one i do so it was an idea of a song which is just very simple it's like this moment you get to in your life where you go hang on a minute <laughs> What does it all amount to? You know, fuck. And it was that simple. And, and uh, you know, one of the things that we considered when we were looking at developing material together was was that I brought that sense of, okay, what's this mean, this moment in, in people's lives when they try and take stock of everything and what really matters? Yeah, so um, I was very interested in uh, it kind of exploring a father-daughter relationship on stage and particularly, you know, uh, maybe a slightly problematic relation not that I have a problematic relationship with my own father um well I mean who doesn't in some ways but yeah. that thing of the a slightly hapless single father not quite uh, knowing what to do with his precocious teenage daughter might have some basis in fact they're actually very interested in that idea of um toxic masculinity wholesome masculinity yeah. the crisis of masculinity all of that kind of stuff and exploring that through um a slightly comic lens, but through a sport that feels, uh, that for a lot of people would feel typically a kind of female sport or a feminine sport. Um, also just, I work a lot with circus and physical theater and dance theater. So any chance to have ribbons and cartwheels and backflips and I'm there. Yeah, that, I think that's the, the thing for me that really uh, sticks out as being such a, I think such a draw is that the exploration of toxic masculinity because I think it really is an issue in society still I think and, and I think that the, the fact that you are using you know rhythmic gymnastics which which like you said is would a lot of people would equate that to being oh that's a girly thing or that kind of that idea that that's something that's reserved for females I think it's so interesting to take a group of of, you know, very run of the mill men as well. You know, not the, you know, they're not, they're not sort of, I think they're not they're, athletes. They're not athletes. Yeah, and also, not well, you life. know, they're not of our industry where obviously, yeah. you know, men in, men in our industry are much more, of course, are more open to, you know, dance and that kind of world. But it's actually a group of men who are just, you know, you could have taken, they, they, they could very easily all be sat in a pub to get, which they do, or they could be, you know, working in in industry and it's the fact that they're taking you're taking those people and putting them in that environment and saying that's okay it's cool to do that i think is really really wonderful how did that inform the musical style like did you when you when you thought of it did you immediately go this is the type of music that it's gonna that i'm going to tell this story through how did you arrive at the style that you arrived at well, I think one of the things is that, I mean, I'm a, I'm a guitar composer, really. I, I often yeah. write songs using guitar. Um, and uh, there was this idea that this central protagonist was a kind of, you know, had wanted to be a rock star in his youth. That was his sort of dreams. And that was part of the whole sort of, you know, midlife crisis 
element of the story and the notion that there was a band that this is something that in a way every man dreams or it's, it's a very it's an every man dream it's like oh you know this is the thing i'm going to be I, I had such fun when i was young when i was in a band it's almost like a metaphor the music it, having the band almost becomes a metaphor for, for that group of men in their other band-like relationship throughout so that that felt natural and that the music would be quite straightforward say singer songwriter with a lot of the influences that come from you know 70s 60s even uh, that, that might have filtered through to people who are listening to music a while ago. Music feels very much of that, of the world. I think if you were to have a musical that was kind of this big orchestral thing, it would absolutely remove that, that sense of community amongst the, the characters. And I think actually, yeah, you're absolutely right. That, that music, you can imagine, I think it, just as easily you could have had a story about a, a group of blokes coming together to form a band well, I think one of the things Ben is sort of most amazing at, other than um, really unexpected and catchy melodies, is that yeah. like there's a real, there's a kind of rich simplicity to the language, which right. just feels like a match for the characters. Because yeah. it's not about, you know, there's always that famous thing where Sondheim says he feels like he got it wrong, he got the lyrics wrong, for, or whatever yeah, the thing was for I Feel Pretty, because he felt oh, like that was the yeah. wrong thing for the character. And I feel like what hopefully both the lyrics and the, the music do is is they they you know, they unpack the complexities of these individuals, but also they're ordinary people living ordinary lives. And that's, the, that's, those are still stories that we want to see on our stages and kind of deserve to be up there along with, you know, I'm trying to think of all the other musicals where it's, you know, they're much more fantastical or extreme. It's about blowing up small moments. That's what I find yeah. really, really interesting. It's taking little moments that we maybe take for granted and actually saying, no, oh, actually these things matter because they're our lives. And I think actually, we don't, not everything has to be a big grand gesture. It's absolutely, you're right, it's absolutely not necessary no. um, to do that. It's not the only way that we experience music as emotional. We, we, there's lots of songs that we listen to that absolutely key into our emotions that work on a much subtler level. It's interesting to work out, because very often one says, well, what's the difference between a sort of pop song and a music theatre song? And there is a difference. At the same time, there are a lot of musicals that actually do just use pop of one sort or another. And there is enough range in those songs if you mine them in different ways. And, you know, we, there are actually quite a few different styles that are sort of jigsawed together in this show. And they, I think they hopefully work because they form part of a language, as we discussed, that fits with a certain age and a certain, you know, um, <laughs> history. You know, there's a bit of ska and there's a bit of rock and there's, you know, a bit of doo-wop <laughs> doo in there. Sort of these things yeah. that are all part of our common language and heritage. And they all, but within all those, you can speak to all kinds of emotions, you can find all kinds of range, sure. and you're kind of invited in intimately rather than having it thrust at you, you know, yeah. uh, to someone's emotional world. Coming from my point of view of being, playing Connor and, 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 the, and what the relationship between my character and Sid, which obviously we see through the song Waiting to Begin, what you're doing is you're presenting two people at two, what's brilliant, they're, they're at completely different points in their life and yet they're at the same point in their life because they have this common ground of neither of them actually know what they want from life. And I guess yeah. it's, it's an interesting, it's so nice to see the different perspectives. Well, that, that was one of the earlier songs we wrote, wasn't it? And it was actually trying to find we thought was the central character you know you're kind of looking at this i want idea of you know who is your central character and what, what's sort of driving them and that's you can get totally hidebound in these formulas and it, it, yeah. it, in the end you find what, what works but it was interesting that so we were thinking about this sort of maybe 40-ish character you know and, and that song or that idea of, of trying to find your place in life came with that baggage that I've talked about already but then you realize of course it's true at every point in your life you know you're always questioning and it's and and what I think is lovely is that you've developed this this older character probably Sid who's who's there because we don't we often don't see those characters our protagonists tend to be young people you know particularly in musicals you realize oh it's so much easier you know I remember going to see a show in development once and thinking gosh they've tried to make these older people into the protagonists and I'm not I'm not rooting for them you know, it's we so it's so um, um, built in, driven, drummed in that we root for young people. It's natural, 
uh, they've got their lives before them. But we're all facing, you know, uh, an aging population. We've got to be rooting for all of us all the time. Kind of speaks to themes that are woven through all of the the rest of the show, and, and because actually, pretty much every single character has a kind of moment of existential crisis where they feel they're not quite there yet, or they haven't. You know, I think we're all of us wherever we are they, they can fall into that trap of the kind of if life's a competition then like I haven't won yet or I'm not there yet or you know I've got this level of success but I'm not wherever and hopefully that's yeah as Ben says that's sort of what makes that song work for kind of every age and every generation and every person at any stage in their life um, but it also speaks back into the kind of wider themes for the other characters. Has any of what's been going on during this unsettling time, and I don't just mean the pandemic and lockdown, but all of these various, you know, Black Lives Matter, um, all of the transgender movements, um, you know, uh, the anti-Semitism, all of that sort of, all of these, has that, any of that stuff, do you feel like you've, you, have you changed the script at all? Have you, has it forced you to kind of look at certain things and have you wanted to incorporate certain things that have been going on at all? There were rewrites. We had planned on the back of the workshop that we all did together in December yeah. to develop some characters further and to develop some themes further, particularly yeah. stuff around kind of gender and yes. both gender norms, but also kind of gender identity and that kind of stuff. So there'll definitely be a bit more of that. I mean, I think, um, and in terms of when we come to, car, you know, the hopefully touch wood, um, if we go into production <laughs> next year, you know, the, the, uh, having a diverse having an ethnically diverse cast um is sort of always to be honest is kind of always a priority for me but you know yeah, i think that will continue to be a priority so that this feels like it's reflecting you know it's reflecting britain it's reflecting manchester which is where it's at and of course the thing we haven't talked about at all is is you know one of the characters is hard of hearing several of the other characters yeah, of one of the characters has a deaf child and therefore uses bsl so there's a kind of there's a whole um conversation about the integration of um sign language into the piece and making musical theatre that's accessible to a deaf and or hard of hearing audience or those audiences. Um, so there's all that in the mix as well. Why did you want to explore that? Why did you want to go down that route of exploring um, deafness in, in one of the characters? Uh, I'm not deaf and I'm not hard of hearing, but, uh, yeah. you know, but, but sort of as with a general approach to creating a set of characters and a reality that reflects the diversity of our world. Um, it, it was partly about just making sure that that they that was a reflection of the world we're in. Also, yeah. particularly in a physical, you know, rhythmic gymnastics is a visual physical um, thing. So, so you could be as adept at that as a hard of hearing person as a hearing person. Um, also, really, uh, Kinney will blush when he hears this, but I did very specifically write the part of Sid for Kinney. Having met him, um, we did some general meetings where we were meeting um, deaf and disabled performers uh, and met him then and sort of knew. I quite often like to write parts for people like a bit for people I know now. Um, yeah. So, you know, and it's possible that there are not many other people in the world who are highly skilled dancers with beautiful singing voices who are also hard of hearing and gorgeous performers like Kinney is. So, Kinney, don't ever leave us. Um, is a wonderful but, that's, 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 yeah, it's so lovely that the biggest one gives it character, isn't it? Is that you actually follow your interests and the people you know and the people you love and you want to work into it. I think it's a very natural way of working and it yes. brings something to it because it's it's very easy to either have things that are very sort of formulaic and normative and you know these are this is just typical sets of relationships or to try too hard to kind of make everything diverse and whatever and what you need is to to, to do things naturally and truthfully having somebody who's hard of hearing or deaf or whatever it's absolutely believable within this world everyone's dealing with all these things all the time and so I think that's what's really lovely about it is that it's a as it were a very normal community within which of course things that aren't seen as normal are yeah. going on. I feel like I don't see enough stories where those you know and the same for the trans communities that like where they're the, uh, where a trans narrative isn't about their transness or a deaf narrative is 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 you know the it's not the deaf thing is the, the hard of hearing thing for Sid is actually really um uh it's not problematized. It's not kind of part of the narrative. It just comes, it's sort of there in passing, uh, yeah. which is <laughs> my idealized version of how society should be. Like these things aren't like, that's part of the political act of writing these characters going, we, uh, 
this is the new normal. Like those things don't need to be problematized in this place. They're not problematized. Here's just a person who happens to be deaf or happens to be this or happens to be that. I think there's, there's this huge assumption that as soon as you cut, like as soon as you announce something with an all black cast, everyone immediately jumps to, well, it must be a story about slavery or it must be something to do with racism. It has to be something to do with that struggle. And actually it's like, what? No, it can just be a story. And it just so happens that all of the cast are, like, it's just being told from that perspective. And so I think that's the point that we need to get to where we don't immediately jump to a stereotype of something. I remember when, and this actually, I, I, I still don't know, but I remember we had a conversation or it just kind of came up and we kind of, it, it was kind of thrown away. We kind of said the, the, the question of whether, of what Connor's sexuality is, and I kind oh, of oh yes, because I, I, I think he's bisexual. Well, yeah, I, but you see, I, <laughs> I, I don't, I still don't know. I still don't know because I, I, <laughs> I, 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 and this is what I kind of love about it is that we don't. It's not in. It's not hugely important. Yeah. It's not a. It doesn't need. And Ben, it's kind of going off your point that it, it, it almost doesn't need to be discussed. Because why well, it's like one of the characters is gay and has children, but actually the gayness is not, you know, yeah, it's not referenced. It's exactly, just, and I feel yeah. like there are so many musicals where it ha where you you suddenly go, it it has to be made a big deal. Well, he's the gay character, and they mm. ha and it has to be made this big deal, and it's like, well, no, I, well, why? So you've just got a rich tapestry of characters, and I think it's absolutely right, and I think it's absolutely essential that we see. And we start seeing in theatre, and in and not just theatre, but in television, in film, and also not just that we start seeing um, not just in front of the camera or on the stage, but backstage and behind the camera, we see a representation of what we see on the street every single day. Particularly when you're working in London, you can and you've got such a diverse range of cultures, you know, people from all walks of life walking around the street, and then you go into a rehearsal room and you kind of go. Why, why, why is there a change? And so I think, and obviously with all of these movements taking place at the moment, I hope, I, would, I really hope that we will start seeing that. Um, and particularly within our industry, because I think our industry is a very accommodating industry. And, we're, and I think we try and be progressive in terms of moving towards what we should be seeing, I think. Um, Kind of to round off, in terms of future plans, obviously, kind of, we don't know how long we're going to be in this theatreless situation, which is by the day more and more increasingly um, tragic and sad. Is there a world where this could potentially exist? Is there a is there a, a lockdown backup plan for this to like a, 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 some sort of, I don't, you know, we're seeing more digital productions of certain things mm. being done. You know, um, uh, they did um, Songs for New World and, and last five years, um, Jamie Lambert produced and they did a kind of a thing where they were filming at home and all of that sort of stuff. Is there a world where this could exist in that way? Do you think, or is that just- I think the challenge for the, for the well, with the examples of the last five years and Songs for New World, is they exist already and they have a yeah. following and a fan base. And I think it's really hard when the piece that you're making is a new piece. Yeah. Um, I mean, weirdly, I do think it would work as a apart from the obviously inherently visual um, ribbon choreography and, and rhythmic dancing choreography. I do think there's a version of it that could work as an audio musical. Sure. Um, but that in itself is a kind of brave new world of like those things don't there's not quite the platform for it and all of that so uh i don't know how ben if ben agrees but i i'd probably just w prefer to wait and try and really do it in the way I think that we a piece like this is about community it's about a bunch of men it's about touching and holding each other and you know that that's so important and that's what this is about so but you know that said we've got to be imaginative i mean there's the whole gymnastics with gymnastics thing is it impossible that you could, we, that in some way, you could present some of it out of doors, uh, yeah, you know, in, sure. some, in some form? You know, that might be a thing. I think we're going to have to work these things out if it comes to a point where theatres, people will be doing outdoor shows first, there's the socially distanced performances. Even that might be just a way of building interest in it and showing people what it's about and exploring it. 
you know, further. But yeah, I, I just want to, you know, I'm just at the moment with all my projects that's thinking really positively about about making them for people to see and experience. And yes, if it particularly suits a recorded medium or a filmed medium, great. Um, but I think this is a show you want people to be singing together, in, um, you know, live. That's that's got to be. We have to, we may have to wait. Yeah, I think it has to happen. I think, that way. I, think it's, I think it's worth the wait because it's kind of like everything that we've discussed. You know that this this show thrives on it being this very intimate experience. I think mm. Um, mm. not just between the characters, but between character and audience. I think with some musicals, you can often feel there is kind of like there's a very definite barrier between audience and show. Whereas with this, I feel like it kind of, there is, it's very inviting. And there is a, there is a kind of a, you can, you can as an audience really relate with what is, with, with, with what is happening on the stage. And so I think there is a much greater connection. So I think, yeah, in terms of holding on to that, I think it is worth the wait to try and bring it to a live, to a live audience, mm. whenever that, Maybe. Maybe. Um, I don't know how to end it. No. How, yeah, how, well, it? how do you end this? I think. This, yeah. well, we should end it with a plug. We should end it with a plug. Let's so, end it with a plug. What well, guys? Yeah. The seventh of August. Friday the album. Check out the album. Download yeah, it on Spotify. Spotify. I was going to say, where can we get it? Places. Where can we get it? Where can we hear it? Spotify, Apple Music, all of them. Basically, all, all the them. digital platforms. It's, it's going to be ooh, everywhere. It's going everywhere. How exciting. How this exciting. Friday, not this Friday, this coming 1 p.m. Friday. August 7th. Yeah. And the mu we've made a music video with integrated BSL choreography. Fabulous. That launches then as well. And so it's launching at the same time. Yeah. Beautiful. I can't wait. I can't wait. Thank you, guys. All right. All Bye. All Goodbye and good Bye. luck to all those ribbons. As a boy I was pretty good at maths and that Good at geography and sport but Nothing to write home about So I never stuck it out Growing up guess I did alright Got myself the grades Found a way to get along but No I didn't mind committing I never felt the heart was fitting I couldn't say I'd found where I belong Nothing ever sticks, nothing comes so quick That I think, ah yes, this is it, this is my thing Still haven't found my thing I'm still waiting, still waiting, waiting to begin Me too, lad Really? Everybody's got a dream, though I never found mine Just a kind of steady job but thought at least I'm getting paid So I guess I kind of stayed All my life I were good with girls I could take me pick So I never took a wife But you can sneer at matrimony Till the day you're old and lonely And you long for someone else's life Nothing ever stuck, never had that look Never said, ah yes, this is it, this is my thing Never found my thing Still waiting, still waiting, still waiting Waiting to begin Looking back on 40 years All oh, that life lost in backward glances Mostly thrown away my chances Is it all downhill from here? I can't keep waiting for the start For my head to find my heart I'm gonna find, find something, something, do something, something, be something I'll slowly fall apart Something's gonna, gonna stick, gonna find it quick, gonna, gonna say it. Ah, yes, this is it, this is my thing. I'm gonna find my thing. I'm ready, I'm ready. You're ready, you're ready. We're ready, we're ready. Ready to 
to begin Ready to begin